Time for our first monthly round of your underground metal albums from Bandcamp. We're going to kick things off with Akernar and Instilling the Abyss. Out of Greece. Three song EP. Melodic black metal. Ooh, some good riffing in here. Okay, good little earworms. Good atmosphere too. Production seems solid. I feel like the vocals are just like slightly high in the mix. Like maybe just a little bit. Could just be me. What else we got here? Ooh, got some thrashier stuff here, too. Got a vector feel on this one. Kind of techy. I wasn't expecting that. Good mixing that in. I feel like that, gu that guitar lead is in my right ear, and it, it feels just slightly too loud, too. So just some like very minor mixing stuff to potentially toy with here. That could also be because I've had one earbud in for the past like hour or so, so my hearing might be off, so <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. But yeah, this sounds pretty rad to me. Good way to kick off the year, even if a bunch of these picks are still leftovers from 2023, but hey, that is Akernar with Instilling the Abyss. Hell yeah. <laughs> Alright, we have Opposition Party with Rethrashed. Solid album cover here. There's going to be some complaints, <laughs> but I just like the art style and color scheme. A little quieter than the last album. I will say... When you have such a professional looking album cover, it's a little off-putting for the production to be a little bit more kind of lo-fi. These guys are out of Singapore. Yeah, right off the bat, production is the biggest concern for me here. That kick drum is way too loud. And then everything else is like too quiet. I feel like you could bring the kick, kick drum down and then bring everything else up. Yeah, the kick drum is just like overpowering everything to the point where it's like you can even hear the cymbals kind of get compressed out of the mix. I like the music though. Very kind of, uh, Sepultura is the vibe I'm getting overall, because there's a lot of groove, the vocals kind of remind me of Max's delivery. Yeah, I think musically there's a lot to work with here, like, I'd be, I'd be curious to hear this in a different format or live. Yeah, this just, just feels like very solid crossover that could just use a little bit more finesse when it comes to production and mixing. Yeah, very Sepultura. But yeah, that is Opposition Party with Refreshed. We had Annex Void with Past Future Illusion out of Detroit, Michigan. Just a single for now. Usually that's a precursor to people coming back around with more material. Looks like we're going a little post-metal here, maybe? Oh! Okay, surprise transition to, like, progressive metalcore gent. Sounds pretty cool. Getting some like Entheos vibes a little bit. 
pretty clean suit too. This part's almost a little like shoegazy too. So maybe a little loathe in there too, kinda. Very pretty. Great performances, production, rock solid. Yeah, this is uh this is good. So again, like if you can get the attention of Entheos or like Spirit Box and get them to share this out. Like I could totally see this opening for something like that. Little sixth kind of guitar grooves here too. That's great. Or I guess we could just say Meshuggah, but it gets old saying that. That sounds red. Yeah. And obviously we're skipping around here because this is all about just getting you all interested and in going out and picking this stuff up for yourselves. But yeah, like what I'm hearing here. Definitely excited to hear more. That is, again, Annex Void with Past Future Illusion. Then we've got Purge of Relics with Rags, Dirts, and Invisible Men. This is out of New York, Queens to be specific. Solo record, death metal thrash and grind in the tags. Definitely grindy, that was the first thing that came to mind. So this is where ugly production I think works. Like, I think it fits the cover art. I don't feel thrown off by it. I think it fits the style. I'm still able to pretty much catch everything and just by nature this genre should be kind of on the uglier side. I tighten it up a little bit, but overall I think it works here. I feel like the vocals could have a little bit more presence. The drums sound really good, which makes me wonder if they're... Uh, if they're just drum samples, it's not entirely clear. I could see it going either way. I don't know if they're performed or sampled, but just how clear they sound in comparison to some of the other stuff makes me think maybe it's sampled, which is fun. Like, I don't have a problem with sampled drums. Yeah, I like it over. The guitar work is solid, good headbanging music. I just feel like it needs a little more character. Like, I just feel like as soon as I move on from it, I'm gonna kind of forget it. But it, it could just be it needs some more listens, because the guitar works pretty good. I'm hearing more and more kind of like, kind of technical aspects in it too. Yeah, I think the biggest thing I would say is Toying with the vocals a little bit more, see how can you squeeze something a little bit more memorable out of this. But I think there's a lot of good here to work with. So yeah, there's Purge of Relics with Rags, Dirt, and Invisible Men. Then, then we have uh, Maudice with Maudice. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. It's French, I believe. This is a Paris, France based band. I like the cover. Guessing we're going Doom. Oh, we have a visitor. <laughs> Cutie's in her snuggly pajamas. <laughs> yeah, we're going Doom here. So I could even tell. And a good, uh, good example too of like, I want to look at the cover art and already have a pretty good idea of what it sounds like. And I think they, they nailed that here. Very cavernous sounding too. This, this is definitely more in my wheelhouse of the type of doom I tend to enjoy. A little bit more of that kind of primitive man vibe. I suppose leave it to the French too. I feel like just French, France in general has a lot of like, when it comes to the uglier side of their music, like they get, they get wild with it. <laughs> Also makes me think of um, another French group that's a little more sludgy. 
The name's on the tip of my tongue, but as usual, I can't think of what it is. I'm sure somebody will throw it out in the comments. It's usually what happens. Yeah, good production, good performance. There's this kind of just slimy grossness to it that I enjoy. Also makes me think of things like uh, Lord Mantis. Yeah, bravo. Another example of uh, what I'm looking for when I go out for Duke. So yeah, that is Maldice with Maldice. Another single, we have Dark Fortune from Death Reapers out of Poland. Western vibes in this photo here. More like Death and Rolly kind of vibe. Melodic death metal also in the tags. Very, they're definitely getting that kind of like Polish influence. That I feel like Greece and Poland in particular have like very characteristic sounds that come through. Hearing a little in flames in the guitars too, like that early kind of jester race energy. But mixed with kind of a bluesier vibe. Vocals a little questionable there, that's something I would work on. It's just straight up getting off key. Yeah, I think the vocals and then the production's a little bit flat. Like it's it's mixed fine, but I don't know, there's just like just feels very two-dimensional, if that makes sense. So I think those would be my two main pieces of feedback. It's kind of interesting, though. Sort of more like... I don't know, just a different taste on that Melodest sound. So yeah, that is Death Reapers with Dark Fortune. We got La Salle with Foghorn of Italy. Another name I'm probably not pronouncing entirely correctly. It's been a long time since I took any Italian. That was like sophomore year of high school, maybe junior year. Or actually, I think Italian's what I carried all the way through high school. But I don't remember any of it. <laughs> I feel like more and more I'm forgetting all the German I learned in college. Definitely more of a post-metal vibe here. Oh, we got industrial insides. Noise rock? Okay, post-punk. Very hypnotic and haunting. Definitely, um... Uh, I'm picking up on a lot of, uh, influences here. Potentially. Yeah, very kind of like entrancing. I like it. I'm deciding on the vocals, but I feel like this is one of those styles where having a more kind of like weird, almost improvisational, semi spoken word approach works pretty well. Oh. You get more aggro too though. This is more helmet. It's like strap it on here a helmet. Hell yeah. Oof. Yeah, I like this one. <laughs> Those guitars, though, are very much, uh... <laughs> once again, I can't think of the day group. The group that unfortunately got canceled. Why can I not think of their name? They had one of my favorite albums of the last, uh, decade. 
Yeah, I can't think of it. But I'm definitely hearing some of that in there. Which, hey, you know, we may not hear from them anymore, so if somebody else wants to step in and pick up on that style I loved so much, do it. And just don't be a bad person in the process. <laughs> but yeah, that is La Sale with Foghorn. Really digging it. Hope to hear more from you. Stay in touch. All right, we got Haunter with Incantations Through Dark Magic in New York. One little synth intro. I'm pretty sure I've heard this specific synth intro before, though. And maybe it's just because a lot of these little uh, spooky organ intros sound similar, but I don't know, that one sounded particularly familiar. Going thrash here, I think. Okay, black thrash, hell yeah. On the more raw side of the spectrum, too more venom energy. I like this. I think you could bring the vocals and the guitar like one, like just notch up in the mix. But other than that, I'm really digging the reverb. I like when these really fast bands go with the more kind of doomy, cavernous production. It just creates this very interesting and, and I think, pleasing effect to listen to. Guitar work sounds rad. More of a punky bass on this one. But. Destroyer 666 kind of vibes to uh, Rebel Wizard. These leads are fine. I wouldn't turn them up anymore. But yeah, the vocals still feel like a little, little bit too quiet. I like that they're kind of in the background, but I'd bring them up just a touch. But the overall effect is great. Just, just toy with the mix a little bit, a tiny bit, not too much. Because you could do this wrong and have the vocals too loud. Too, but overall, I like what I'm hearing here. Guitar work sounds awesome. I like how the vocals sound. Drumming solid. Full package here. Great, yeah. Another one interested in hearing more. That is Haunter with incantations through Dark Mitch. Alright, we have... Ugh. Seanaldino? With Bastoni. Interesting cover here. Out of Charlotte, North Carolina. A little bit of... Oh, there's, a, there's like a little bit of like motorhead speed metal vibes in here, but also like... Oh yeah, there's cru okay, yeah, crusty or sludge, I hear that. Okay. I never thought about that before, but I guess I would kind of describe crust as like motorhead, but sad. <laughs> That's kind of what crust is. Sad motorhead. Sad, bitter, miserable motorhead. <laughs> You heard it here, folks. If you steal that, I, I demand you give me credit, because that just came to me now, and I think that that's, like, almost the perfect description of what crust is. Digging this, though, like, you're really doing a good job with kind of, like, keeping things moving along. Some crust can get repetitive, but I'm hearing a lot of, like, dynamics and transitions here to keep things interesting. Different speeds, different kind of textures, that ever-driving punk bass. Cr crust can get very formulaic, even though I, I, I enjoy it a lot, but it's like you hear one crust band, it sometimes feels like you heard them all. But I hear a lot of uh, thought put into this that makes it feel a little bit more 
to be redundant thoughtful, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I don't think there's anything I'd necessarily change here. I think, again, it's like with Crust, how do you stand out? That cover art's an interesting choice. I think that's actually good. I feel like someone would look at that and be like, what? Um, that can go in either direction, but... Yeah, just how do you market yourself in a way that's, that gets you out there? But yeah, that is Sean Aldino, if I'm saying that right, with Bastoni. We have Lazarus with Scorn Zone. I like that title. Another little two-songer here, but they are long. Almost 20 minutes each. Son of Spain. Oh, the label is out of Spain. Not positive about the band. We got Drone, Doom, Free Improvisation. Uh, not sure it says here where they're from explicitly. We're well, not necessarily seeing it. But anyways, well, no, I'm not a huge drone guy, but it's always a, a solid palette cleanser. It's definitely that creepier side of drone. Oh, okay, we get, we've got some actual mus musicianship here. This is kind of reminding me of. Uh, A little bit of like bullet, bullet for blue sky, but also the um, uh, the a perfect circle version of when the levy breaks. A little bit of that like kind of country swag to it, and the groove. Yeah, cool stuff again. Not not always my thing, but I like that they're kind of like mixing in the actual kind of quote-unquote music with the drone and it seems to have a flow to it then I'd have to like sit and listen to actually say whether that's true or not but overall sounds interesting as far as drone goes like a lot of it can be kind of like boring and sometimes I even wonder how much work goes into it I'm sure more than I even think, but this in particular, it feels like there's a lot of, again, thought going into it. But yeah, that's Lazarus with Scorn Zone. Then we have Spooky Steve with Childhood. <laughs> Welcome to the world of tomorrow! More uh, droney, more kind of industrial stuff. Oh yeah, hip hop here, horrorcore, industrial. Oh, hello there. I never asked to be born. My flesh bleeds. It's just chilling in the void. Then ripped on it. We gotta vibe with this. Because you wanted a new toy. I wasn't expecting this vocals. Reminds me a little bit of that Norwegian, like, blackened hip-hop band. I've covered on the channel before, but this is, uh... I'd say a step weirder than that. A little bit of a uh, odd future sentiment too. I kind of like it. I was looking at this cover thinking it was going to be really stupid, but honestly, I'm kind of vibing with it. Ooh, we got some like chip tune stuff in here. Always a sucker for that. Oh, you know what? I just realized. We, we've covered Spooky Steve before. We did uh, New Leaks Death Grips track this 2014. <laughs> and I remember having a reaction to that too, but I, I, this does kind of feel like a step up from what I remember. This part's very kind of... The music reminds me of, like, with teeth here and Nine Inch Nails. I, what did I tell you? France, man. That might be the label, though.
Yeah, definitely, you wanted something different. This is it, that is Spooky Steve with Child Rap. Oh, never mind, that was Void Dweller that did this one. Just same label, I guess. All right, next up we have Puritan Opiate with Porus. Out of Massachusetts. Noisy. Atmospheric black and death metal, dark ambient and drone. Solid atmosphere. A little, little raw. But everything coming through nicely. Got a lot of good layering, layering happening here. It really does, this is like the perfect cover for this, because I do feel like I'm like tunneling into this abyss. Drums sound really solid too. It's very kind of hypnotic. Kind of reminds me of a uh, Silent Hill music that you'd hear in the uh, other world segments. Maybe during like a boss fight or something. I like that. Free download too, so can't go wrong with that. Oh, and then this one, also kind of Silent Hill, Akira Yamaoka vibes, a bit a little more. Some industrial rock vibe. Puritan Opiate, you gotta let me know, are you a Silent Hill fan? Because I would just be shocked if you weren't. Because <laughs> I just hear here's a lot of that DNA in here. Be a pretty profound parallel thinking. Yeah, good kind of thinking music, too. Oh, picks up in the later part here, too. Yeah, that's rad. Tapping into something I really enjoy, even if it's not something I listen to a ton. But yeah, that is Puritan Opiate with Porus. Right, we have Dolorosa with Summoning Ancient Bleakness out of Spain. Interesting cover. Looks like some... Classic art that's been made black and white. Oh, well, do me. And more of that misery music. <laughs> Ooh. It's kind of interesting. Those more kind of eerie wavery vocals I tend to associate with avant-garde black metal even if the music itself is a bit more straightforward a lot more straightforward I do like that does that carry through okay okay it's not just that though this almost feels like a different album <laughs> much more aggro here those jangly guitar tremolos This is more like Gorgorothy. More death metal vocals on this one too. There's those weird vocals again. Yeah. Good atmosphere, solid production. Very cavernous sounding. I like those vocals. Like again, I when I've been talking about, like, what do you do to stand out? Something simple like that, of just, like, doing something weird with the vocals can be the answer. So, yeah, this is... Those are the little touches that make me tend to remember things more, too. Good. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Very second-wave-sounding black metal, but... 
Yeah, the weird. It reminds me a little bit of uh, like early Mayhem vocals, but less annoying. <laughs> Good attitude to it too. This part reminds me a little bit of Toke. Yeah, it sounds cool. It's standout black metal release here. And that is Dolorosa with Summoning Ancient Bleakness. Alright, we have Sea of Consciousness with Sea of Consciousness. We have previously covered, I believe, a single from this. And now this is the full length. Oh, you know what? I do remember covering this because I remember the cover art. Ooh, yeah. That brashy stuff. Hell yeah. Very skeleton witchy, but then it's got those like slower moments too. I think we covered Misconception and From the Ashes, or at least one of those. This is almost like a little jazz break. I think I might have compared this last time to uh, Dreadnought, that part. And the vocal's powerful. Listen to that. Haunted. But I like the mix. It's an interesting mix of these two kind of divergent areas. I'm going to skip to some tracks that we definitely should not have covered yet. Again, they're from the Netherlands. Voice is absolutely beautiful. Gets me in all the right ways. Yeah, very interesting. In a weird way, these these softer parts remind me more of like the the pop singer songwriters I love the most from like the 80s and 90s. And then the heaviness comes in. This is kind of like 80s power ballad vibes. Getting getting a little goosebumpy. Quite a mix of styles happening here, like... I feel like you listen to one song of this and you're not really gonna get the full scope of what's going on. Ooh! I wanna hear- I wanna hear that transition. Where is it? There's a gradual one there. I wanna kick. There we go. Yeah, great. A lot of great, like, yin and yang kind of stuff going on here. Just very interesting. like it a lot. Definitely check out Sea of Consciousness. Sea of Consciousness. All right, we have Tankist with Forced Equal out of Estonia. There they are. This guy looks like, uh... Dang it, what's that guy that's in, like, every movie right now? Including Dune and Wonka. Can't think of his name. Looks like him. Old school thrash. Good attitude. I like the vocals. Ooh. What was that? <laughs> Almost like a folky kind of element there. Yeah, this. We're getting into some interesting twists and turns here. A little hint of progginess in here, too. A little black metal. Yeah, a lot of different tags here, too. 
And again, with that kind of like standout vocal performance. To make something that's already pretty impressive, well, it's just a little bit more unique, too. Another very black metal intro there. Yeah, cool. Another another really cool one. It's this stuff that makes me so excited to check out new music, because you just never know what you're going to find. There's so much good stuff out there. Yeah, that is... Tank is... Don't change a thing. Just work on marketing and getting your name out there as much as you can. Because Tank is with Forced Equal. Alright, we got That's Not Self-Help with <laughs> Guided Unfoldings of Absence. Out of India. I feel like we may have covered these guys before, but... Or this guy, I assume, looks like it's probably Solo. Very impressive musicianship. Ooh. A little jazz break here. Sounds like this guy needs to be playing with, like, Periphery. Or Kralis. Impressive guitar work, but also, like, interesting. Like, I've never been into, like, listening to, like, virtuosos, like, Joe Satriani and stuff, because I just find it very wanky. But stuff like this can be interesting. Sounds like bugs. That's the imagery I get from this, a lot of bugs crawling around. Like that bass too. Jazz fusion, jazz fusion, jazz core project. That's how they describe it. Another one of those kind of metal adjacent kind of releases. Yeah, it sounds impressive. Like I'm definitely intrigued. Yeah, an instrumental is like even harder. I feel like to to really cement yourself in the zeitgeist. So. Groups like this, if you want to make it bigger, you probably got to also do some kind of brand building stuff like having a YouTube channel or collabs or things like that. But musically sounds great. So yeah, that's not self-help with guided unfoldings of absence. All right, we have disorientation with survival mode. Hopefully YouTube won't take issue with this cover art. <laughs> I will say, I looked at this cover art and I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit. Like, I just... It feels a little try-hard to me. I'm sure that's not what the intent was, but... Looks like we got some, like, brass going on here. Dark Symphonic out of Canada. A little loud. <laughs> there we go. Another one I'm thinking of, like, Dreadnought with... This uh, implementation of the brass here. Interesting. Very eerie. Yeah, this is very, especially earlier Dreadnought. That doom mixed with like jazz and symphonic elements. It's a very creepy effect. Sounds intriguing. I've had a lot of good ones, as always, but I feel like as the deeper we get in, the weirder stuff gets, and by extension, the more interesting things get for me, at least. This January has been an interesting January. 
feel like January is usually kind of a dead month, but there's like have been a lot that I've enjoyed this year already. Well, uh, is that clarinet? My my sister used to play clarinet, so I'm like, do I still remember what that sounds like? <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, it could be like a flute or something, but or an oboe, maybe a combination. But yeah, that is disorientation with survival mode. Alright, we have uh, Hyperboreus with Exaggerates. Just a single, but I think there's a uh, full length maybe coming, I'm forgetting now. I get so many emails, it's hard to remember the details of all of them out of Ukraine. Hard to nail down the genre here. I mean, it's death metal, but it's like this weird, like, syncopated kind of jerky sounding death metal. It's kind of interesting. That guitar tone, too. I think the production... You could clean it up a little bit, but I, again, I think part of the shtick here is like that, that kind of adds to how odd it is. Music is the war itself. So it's, this part kind of reminds me of Portal. Forgive you if you forgive me if you hear my dog barking too. Somebody just came in. Quiet dog. <laughs> Trying to listen to indecipherable noise here, and you're making noise. <laughs> Yeah, very weird. Very weird, and I kind of like it. I don't know if I can handle a full album of this, but I'm intrigued. I mean, I like stuff like Alterage and Portal and Abyssal, and I'd kind of group this in a similar camp. Even the vocals kind of remind me of Portal. Yeah. But yeah, that's Hyperboreus with Exaggerates. All right, we have Still Dusk with Garden. Right, Grease. Ooh, a little post-punky. You gonna listen to The Cure? <laughs> That's a very The Cure intro. Here's the group. We're kind of late 90s, early 2000s rock vibe too. Vocals pretty solid, they have a little kind of like dreamy aspect to them. Kind of catchy, little hook there too. Something I could see like Evanescence fans potentially getting into. But also, there are a lot of those like tough girl rock bands again from like late 90s, early 2000s. Pretty catchy. I, I feel like there is like a little something missing that could even step it up a little bit more, but I'm not sure what it is. Because as much as I like the songwriting, it the... Something about it feels a little bit flat. Ooh. A little flat and one-dimensional. And it might just be the production. It might just be the production. I, I think there's something there that's kind of taking away a little bit of the impact. But I think you got something here. I think toy with the production side of things and see if you can give it a little bit more of a fuller sound, a little bit more dimension. That's fun. 
There's some good dynamics here, too. Yeah, I'm intrigued. Keep playing with it. That is still dusk with garden. Okay, we have breaths with melt away. We previously covered, uh, I think it was this one in 2023. Floret? I think that's how it's pronounced. Richmond, Virginia project. Another kind of nature themed cover. Very drifty post metal, as I recall. Kind of hearing elements of like softer moments of both Deftones and Quicksand. Another very dreamlike sounding song here. Melt Away is an appropriate part of this title for sure. That's what it feels like. I'm just melting away. They're kind of droning bass. And then this one does have kind of a beachy feel appropriate to the title. Also thinking of stuff like uh, MGMT, like when they first came out, or uh, the Animal Collective also comes to mind. I not thought about them in a little while. Yeah, very chill. Also thinking of, like, uh, Team Sleep. Boy, I haven't listened to that Team Sleep album in a long time. I still remember buying that in college. It's on the shelf behind me still, I think. Unless I traded it in. Yeah. Sounds good. Good palate cleanser. Good chilling out music amidst the chaos. We have Breaths again with Melt Away. Or we have Masanera and Quiet Fear with Cuatro Vientos Cinco Soles. Out of New Jersey. Loud sounds from New Jersey. So we dance to the beat of a lost future. I can tell this is going to be very uplifting. <laughs> so, polar opposite of breaths, so we're just getting into the gnarly noise now. Feeling Ken mode, feeling uh, swans, stuff like that. Just, you know, happy music. <laughs> Look at those happy faces. This guy, he's happy. <laughs> This guy looks like Jake Gyllenhaal a little bit. A little bit of like uh, post-hardcore in there too. A very like early 2000s post-hardcore. Also hearing maybe even a little bit of like From Autumn to Ashes. Still something I think back on fondly too a lot. In many ways, I feel like Mathcore was kind of like my first real foray, foray into kind of more unusual, out there, and underground music. And then I was able to branch out to heavier stuff from there, but... A little bit of a production change on this one. Yeah, this all sounds great. Like, right up my alley. I can tell Massanera is a little bit noisier, a little bit darker, whereas Quiet Fear feels a little bit more kind of chill, more sad than angry. Yeah, loving it. Great work. Wouldn't change a thing. Just yeah, keep uh, keep on keeping on. Get the name out there. Just like I'm trying to do here. That's Massanera and Quiet Fear. Fear, splitting Cuatro Vientos Cinco Soles. 
Right, we have Dystopia Arch with Rebuilding Society on a Shoestring Budget. I love that title. Brooklyn, New York. Synthy stuff. Well, there's a little bit of health vibes. Dark wave, electronic goth. I'm trying to get my bearings here. I do really like this dark wave stuff that's been... It's been so interesting how dark wave has become like another sect of the metal community because you see this stuff getting shared in metal circles even though it's it's objectively not metal but it is like adjacent in many ways that's why i like doing a channel where i'm not just tied exclusively to metal because i just think there's so many other things out there that are super heavy that have no distortion maybe even no guitars no screaming but still give me that same like rebellious vibe this sounds pretty good another unique feature here you don't i haven't heard a lot of stuff specifically like this like i hear plenty of dark wave but it's usually instrumental Again, some kind of 80s elements I'm feeling to this too. And it's weird because like some of the synths have this like dark skinny puppy vibe, but then the vocals are more... I don't want to say Depeche Mode, it's like, it's, it's different from that. It's, I'd almost align this more with like Tears for Fears or something like that. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, another another unique pick here, Dystopia Arch with rebuilding society on a shoestring budget. Oh god. <laughs> we have Yatagano with you didn't ask for it, but now it's here. Another fun title. Out of Italy. A little trio here. Ooh. More 90s vibes. Oh, garage rock. Noise post hardcore, they say. Interesting cover, too. Looks like they took like an actual old photo and then added this <laughs> these pyramids flying away. Ooh, what, what kind of Jello Biafra sounding vocals? I like that. My favorite punk vocalist, so to say. No, it's very Dead Kennedys with the vocals, I like that. That's fun, that's fun. I like that. I love me a good standout vocalist. A little, a little bit of Mike Patton in there too. This part's a little bit more kind of like Mr. Bungley. Um, let's see. Fran Francesco, if you're watching this, really curious who your influence, really the whole band, I'm curious who your influences are, but especially Francesco, I'm curious like what vocalists you feel like inspire your approach. I always like finding out, too, that I hit it on the head. But I also like finding out I was totally wrong and it's something else. But those are the main ones I hear. Jello Biafra and Mike Patton. And also the, uh... Thing, what's the name of that band that does Rock Lobster? <laughs> A little bit of that, too. This is fun. Definitely a band I could see myself really enjoying live. And I just wish, like... You used to hear stuff like this on the radio. Like, I know it's crazy for younger people to probably... Oh, I like this part. You know it's good when it caught, made me stop mid-sentence. That's always a good sign. Great. 
But yeah, like I was saying, um, yeah, people who who were either like super super young in the '90s or like missed it completely. Like I feel like they can't even understand that the radio was so different back then. Like '90s radio, they would play weird stuff like this, and it was like totally normal. Nobody batted an eye. I wish that would come back because there's just so much there. But yeah, that is Yat Yatanago. Yatagano, <laughs> something like that. Well, you didn't ask for it, but now it's here. And we have Empire Demolition with Defenestration. All's a great word. If you don't know what that means, it is the act of throwing somebody out of a fucking window. <laughs> Insert clip from The Departed of our poor Martin Sheen. Denver, Colorado what I consider to be one of our main U.S. capitals of great metal. Yeah, I've never really thought about it. Like, which, which places would I consider in the U.S. to be, like, the capital? Kind of like how, you know, in Sweden, um, you've got, like, Gothenburg. And in Norway, you've got, uh couple of different places that of course I'm blanking on right now but I would definitely put Colorado on that short list Denver in particular Chicago I might put on there I haven't heard as much from Chicago lately I feel like but they were killing it for a while Anyways, I haven't really talked about the music. <laughs> I am enjoying this a lot. Another kind of like mix of like noise and punk with more extreme elements. It's a weird cover too. It's like busted kind of melty glass with a reflection in it. It's kind of interesting. This, <laughs> whenever I see like a pretty dead or sleeping girl on an album cover too, that instantly makes me think of the 2000s because that was such a, <laughs> that was such a hallmark of album covers for like 2000s metalcore, post-hardcore, that whole scene was like obsessed with dead and sleeping women. <laughs> women with their eyes closed. It's kind of pretty too. Yeah, another one. I I, I think these guys could, uh, or this band could, probably team up with the other one that we just listened to a few albums ago. The split. Again, good mix of like melodic but still angry stuff with more straight-up aggressive stuff. More solid production. The dynamics. I would love for all this stuff to come back and like be big again. Those were good times, man. Good, good times. Yeah, another, another banger. And like, a, they did a good job of mixing together so many different things that I wouldn't really compare it to any one thing. Love the snare tone on this one too. Yeah, that is Empire Demolition. Definitely want to check them out more with Defenestration. All right, y'all. I think that's plenty for January. What a month it has already been. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. This, this last year was amazing. This year, who knows? Maybe it'll be even better with a opening like this. But uh, thank you all for watching as usual. Support me on Patreon if you want to take that extra step. If you're new here, a lot of new people come into this segment. I do videos pretty much twice a week, sometimes more. 
uh, frequently more focused around like lists and uh, rankings, especially. And so stick around, subscribe if that interests you. Don't subscribe if it doesn't, because I don't need any dead subscribers that'll actually hurt the channel. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and uh, comment below your favorites. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off, and I will see you in the trenches.